previously on the Happy Video Game Nerd. Rocket Knight Adventures is still one of the finest games in the Genesis and one of the finest action platformers of the 16-bit era. Just look at him! He's a knight with a jetpack! You, you can't top that! It wasn't the smash hit blockbuster it had every right to be, but it did spawn two sequels. As for how these games measure up to Rocket Knight Adventures, I can't really say right now. I remember not liking the Genesis version back when I was little, but that was a long, long time ago. I'll have to save the Sparkster games for another review down the line. Let's get this out of the way. Rocket Knight Adventures still is and will probably forever be the greatest game in the Sparkster series. The two sequels, both named Sparkster, and the recent reboot, Rocket Knight, do interesting things with the concept, some very successful in their own right, but they don't come close to the sheer brilliance of the original Rocket Knight Adventures. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's almost unfair to hold the three sequels to the high standards of the original because it was clearly given more attention and was a much bigger priority for Konami. Besides, even when you do, no game is truly awful. One game, two sequels, and a reboot, and not a single black sheep among them? That amounts to a lot. All ups and downs considered, the Rocket Knight games make one of the most consistent series of all time. Guilty only of never having a true successor to the original. As I mentioned in my Rocket Knight Adventures review, Sparkster is the hero of the Rocket Knight games, and he was obviously created to cash in on the mascot craze of the early to mid-90s. But if there was any mascot that deserved to stick around after that craze had died down, it was Sparkster. Uh, no disrespect to my boy Earthworm Jim. Sparkster is one of the most well-designed characters in all of gaming, and he's my pick for the greatest underrated video game hero of all time. No disrespect to my boy Firebrand. Sparkster is one of those rare characters that can be cute and adorable, yet badass and a force to be reckoned with. Don't be fooled by that cute face. He still knows how to kick some ass, and he still knows how to party. And people wonder why he took off without marrying the princess. He didn't want to be late for Isabella's show! My point is, I love this dude, and I wasn't alone. There was a clear push to make Sparkster one of Konami's big characters. One reason was, well let's be honest, Konami man hadn't exactly caught on. Then again, he was fun to hit in the face with a hammer. <laughs> Never gets old. T-shirt offers, cameos, his own comic by the same people who made the Sonic the Hedgehog comics, and not one, but two sequels. It's really a shame he never caught on. <sighs> he would have been such a cool character for Smash Brothers. Alright, so for those of you who aren't caught up, here's a quick rundown of the Rocket Knight games. Rocket Knight Adventures was released for the Sega Genesis in 1993. It's noteworthy for not just being a fucking masterpiece, it's also one of the few original games Konami made for the Genesis. I mean, sure, Bloodlines and Hardcore were originals, but there are more or less sequels. Rocket Knight Adventures was its own thing. Now, in a strange business decision that we'll discuss later, there were two sequels developed in 1994, both named Sparkster. Now, instead of one essentially being a port of the other, like, say, Turtles in Time or The Hyperstone Heist, they are completely separate games. In fact, Genesis Sparkster carries the subtitle Rocket Knight Adventures 2 and is the true sequel, while Super NES Sparkster is a spin-off of the first game in which our damsel is kidnapped by a different kingdom, one of wolves instead of pigs. And if these names weren't confusing enough, in the spring of 2010 a fourth game was released, simply called Rocket Knight, which doesn't specifically follow either timeline, instead starting fresh with our hero many years later. Now because this new entry is both physically and spiritually far removed from the other games, we'll talk about it last. It'll just be easier to pretend like it doesn't exist until we're through with the two Sparkster games. And speaking of which, let's get started. Since Genesis Sparkster is technically a sequel, how about we start with that one first? Genesis Sparkster starts right away with our hero already hard at work on his next adventure. But then, without warning, BOOM! You're fighting your arch nemesis Axel Gear and that cool rock'em sock'em robots thing like in the first game. And right away I thought two things. Oh cool, I remember this from the first game. 
But I also remember it being a, a heck of a lot better. Huh, you can you can block now. Well, that's cool. They added a new feature, but it doesn't change the fact that this was a heck of a lot better in the in the first game. And that pretty much sums up Genesis Sparkster. A lot like the first game, with some cool new features, just nowhere near as good. Genesis Sparkster sees a couple changes to the framework of the original. Sparkster's jetpack now charges all on its own, not to mention a lot faster than it did in the original. And you now have two levels of charge. Let your rocket fully charge and you launch faster, further, and harder in a devastating corkscrew attack. Another subtle change is Sparkster is no longer staggered as he free falls after a launch. Instead of plummeting straight down uncontrollably, you can move Sparkster mid-air and launch again if you want. But this change comes at a price of control. It's really handy to have your rocket auto-charge, but you have absolutely no control over your charge now, and launching into the more powerful corkscrew can be really dangerous. An ill-placed corkscrew launch can ricochet you way back the way you came, or worse, like down a pit or on spikes or fire, or behind an object just in time to get crushed by the screen scroll. Other times you'll hit exactly where you want, but instead of killing the enemy you'll only damage it and still bounce off somewhere behind you uncontrollably. And because you move so damn fast, it's very difficult to react and save yourself before you get hurt or die. I had the most trouble with this on the second part of level 3, because I never seemed to be able to launch where I wanted to. But in all fairness, this also was a problem with Rocket Knight Adventures, but this pothole was avoided because you didn't need to use your rocket as much. One reason was because the levels weren't as sprawling, and most platforms could be reached by simply jumping. Also, you used it more infrequently because you had a super powerful and super useful sword. Your sword swung quickly and shot off a powerful beam that traveled about two-thirds of the screen. Your sword was your primary attack, and your rocket was more for traversing platforming segments or when you discovered a shortcut or a weak spot to exploit. But here, I use the rocket a hell of a lot more because your sword is all kinds of useless. Gone is the energy beam, however your sword now has a bit more reach. Sounds great, but you'd never notice it, because your sword swings so fucking slow. I never seem to hit things when I want to, I always seem to hit my target after I've been hit myself. There's a fire sword power-up that you'd think would allow you to shoot fire or something like that, but nope. It just makes your slow-ass sword more powerful. Or so I think, I can never keep the damn thing for too long, because if you get hit once, you lose it. Not to mention, outside of bosses, most enemies are one or two hits, so what's the point? The problem is not that your sword is weak, it's practically useless. I found myself having to resort to the rocket pack much more than I did in the first one, which led to a lot of accidental damage and deaths. These changes don't necessarily break the game or anything like that. It's still a very fun, very, very challenging game in its own right. But they do create issues the first one did not have. Now we'll see a little later how when implemented properly, these changes can really work. But again, that game doesn't exist yet, so we're not going to go there. Besides, there are two bigger problems here. One just baffled me, and the other was complete bullshit. Much like Rocket Knight Adventures and every platformer ever made, there are items scattered all around to be collected, and in this case, jewels. But instead of adding to your score or giving you an extra life if you collect 100, collecting 10 will initiate a slot machine in the upper right-hand corner, which will randomly give out prizes like food, more jewels, extra lives, and I can't fathom why they thought this was a good idea, bombs. Yes, collect enough jewels and you might be rewarded with a fucking bomb falling from the sky. I wouldn't mind so much if this were a once-in-a-while thing, but getting bombed happens far more often than it should. I don't know, maybe it's just my rotten luck, but I got a lot of these damn bombs thrown at me. Like my lame sword and overpowered jetpack weren't enough trouble, I had to keep watch for bombs too. Sometimes I just avoid jewels and don't bother to explore levels, for fear I'll find more jewels but just get bombed. Another reason this slot machine is a nuisance is the rocket boost power-ups that instantly ignite and launch you into a corkscrew. Well, sometimes I don't want to launch my rocket. Sometimes that's the last fucking thing I want to do. But to be fair, they aren't as common as the bombs, and are sometimes helpful. So collecting jewels means you may get food, sometimes an extra life, but also bombs that hurt you and igniters that may launch you uncontrollably at the worst times. Why couldn't they just uh, give you extra lives? I mean, sure, this is unique, but unique doesn't necessarily mean it works. Okay, so I've been ragging pretty hard on this game, but I do have one last piece of criticism to lodge, and it's a doozy. Much like the original, Genesis Sparkster is a tough adventure, and a bit on the long side. Thankfully, Konami was generous to add a password feature to fit your busy lifestyle, 
But here's some bullshit. The only way, the only way to get a password is to say no at the continue screen. This means if you use your last continue, you'd better beat the game, because if you run out of lives, all you're gonna get is the game over screen. You will not be given a password. And passwords track how many continues you have, and choosing no to get your password, well, costs a continue. So if you waited until your last continue to get your password, you won't be able to continue when you resume your game. It almost defeats the purpose of passwords altogether. This was the red flag. After the problems with the sword, the jetpack, the slot machine, and now the passwords, these are the telltale signs of not an incompetently made game, but an unfinished one. I really do feel bad for ragging on Genesis Sparkster so much, because on the surface, it's a really good game. The levels are all big and colorful and varied. The soundtrack is amazing. The new theme is probably the best song that appears in the entire series. It's used in a couple of songs throughout, and every time I hear, I get super pumped. Just like, ah, oh, I gotta go save the world. But then I'm reminded, this is the sequel to Rocket Knight Adventures, and I realize the levels are a little too long, and the boss battles lack polish and are a bit frustrating. Our hero just doesn't control as well as he used to, and the sword and rocket pack just don't work as well as they should. Overall, I found it much harder than Rocket Knight Adventures, but in a bad way, level 3 especially. Clearly, this had all the makings to be an excellent follow-up, but it was rushed out the door while it still needed a few months to cook. Not to mention, fix that broken password system. It's a game brimming with great ideas, huge levels, cool bosses, awesome set pieces, but it's met with poor implementation the whole way. Solid game, but far from a worthy follow-up. Probably the weakest in the series.